that God has manifest this morning Amen. through yes, your healing of your knees and your Amen. healing of your back. Amen. And I don't know what each and every one of you have had going on in your life in general. Amen. But we have to understand that we go through different things in our lives that God might get the glory yes. out of our lives. Glory yes. to God. And so I'm not going to pray anymore because we've already <laughs> taken care of that. So amen. Yeah. you may be seated and we're going to go forth. Go ahead and pull out your swords, your Bibles. And we're going to get into it, people of God. And um, today I'm, I really want to talk about um, how many of you all have thought how seen you every single Y'all see me on Periscope, and y'all pretty much know, um, some of you all may know my story, some of you may not know my story, but um, what I'm going to talk about today is the benefit of applied pressure, the -hmm. benefit of applied pressure, and I want to talk about that because God, a lot of times when we go through different things in our lives, we don't understand that the reason that we go through those things is that God might get the glory out of our lives. When we're in the midst of a situation, and when we're in the midst of a tragedy, you know, time or uh, an adversity in our lives. We want to just jump out of the situation. We want God to deliver us out of the situation. We want this thing to be over quickly. But how many of you all have asked God, God, get the glory out of my life? Yes, God, the glory out of my life. How many people have asked that? Seriously. But you don't understand what you have to go through in order to get the glory Mm -hmm. out of, in order for him to get the glory out of your life. And so I gave an analogy the other day, and I was talking about olives. You know, olives in a jar on a shelf does not work. Olives in a jar on a shelf are only maybe like $3 when you look in the store. But when you go down the aisle a little bit and you see a gallon or even a small thing of olive oil, the olive oil is much more pricely than the olive. Because of the simple fact of what the olive had to go through. It had to go through a pressing. It had to go through a shaking. It had to go through a beating. There had to be some pressure that was applied to the olive in order to get the goodness out. And so what you've been through, I don't know what you all have been through in your life and what you've dealt with in your life, but in order for God to get the glory and for him to get out of your life what he needed to get out, it was necessary. Somebody say it was necessary. It was necessary. necessary. So when you look at it, the olive oil is costly. It's pricey. It costs so much money and it's worth much more than the olive. See, you in your natural state, I'm not going to say it's not worth much, but if you think about it, after you've been through some things, after God had brought you out of some things, then you begin to see your work. Amen. Then you begin Amen. to see, ah, this is what the enemy was after. This is what God was trying Lord, to get out of my life. Amen. So what you've been yeah. through, woman of God, it, it, you, it was necessary for you to go through. Amen. And so I'll give y'all my testimony very quickly. I'll make it very, very short. Um, last year in, am I, no, no, last year in June, no, in May, this is like a really deep testimony. I haven't really given the entire thing, um, but last year in May, I had to go through a present. I had to go through a shaking. Mm-hmm. I had to go through some fire. Um, last year in May, I realized that the man that I was married to for 16 years had been molested my girl for six years. I realized that he was deep in infidelity, um, that he was cheating with numerous amounts of women. Um, and he was a pastor. I was a co-pastor. And so one day, everything was okay. And the next day, there was a shaking that was going on in my life. And the average person that went through that probably would have gave up right in the midst of it. I'm talking about average. I'm not talking about those, you know, and that are really, you know, deep in their, their grounding in the word of God. I'm talking about the average person. But I had to go through all of that. Not that God made it happen. But God allowed it to happen. And so everything that you all have went through, in your, went through in your life, he allowed it to happen. It's for your making. Now, I don't say that storms come to your life to make you. I say storms come to your life to heal. Yeah. They come to your life to destroy you. They yes. come to your life to, to break you. Mm-hmm. They come to your life to, to take you out. Yeah. But the thing is, is that when you stand in the midst of the storm, and when you trust God in the midst of the storm, then that storm will make you better. You look at it when a palm tree goes through all kinds of beatings. You know, a palm tree goes through all types of stuff. What we have to understand is that a palm tree cannot grow in certain environments. But when you put a palm tree in the right environment, even though it goes through the swaying, it goes through the beating, it goes through the bending, when you look at it, because it's in the right environment and it's grounded in sand instead of just dirt, 
then that thing has some foundation to grab onto that even though it may sway and it may bend, it always comes back up. Okay. And so you can picture yourself today as a palm tree. As God has planted you in the right environment in order for you to grow, in order for you to mature, in order to get you to the state that he wants to get you in. Yes. And so in order for God to get his glory out of your life, you're going to have to go through some things. You're going to have to deal with some things. Right. How many people you've been through some different tragedies in your life? Amen. I don't think any of us are void, even Amen. you, man of God. You're not void of those things. And so we have to understand that it's all for his purpose and it's all for his glory. So I always tell people, be careful what you ask for. Mm-hmm. Because if I would have known that I had to go through all of that on last year in order for God to get the glory, I probably would have opted out. <laughs> I probably like, you know what? Don't worry about it. Just forget it. But if God would tell us what's going to happen before it happens, we wouldn't be who we are today. Amen. You wouldn't be able to stand in the test and the trials that you're going to face. What you've been through may be bad, but I can tell you that you're going to go through some worse things than what you've been through. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the thing is, is that we have to understand that in order for God to get the glory out of our life, there has to be some ben- some, some pressure that is applied to your mm-hmm. life. So right. don't opt out. Don't opt out of what God is going to take you through. Don't opt out of what God has planned for your life because it's necessary in order for him to take you to the place that you want to go. You want to go from glory to glory? Mm-hmm. Glory to glory? Sorry, y'all. <laughs> if you want to go from glory to glory, then you're going to have to go through some things in your life. Yes. If you want to, you know, uh, for God to get the glory, you're going to have to go through some different things in your life. So never opt out. Just be willing to stand in the midst of adversity, mm-hmm. declare the word of the Lord, and watch him while he works. Amen. We see here, we in the midst of glory. We look out on the sea, yes. there's nothing but the glory of God. Yes. I'm getting to the word, y'all, but I'm just going to talk. Yes. Mm-hmm. It's, it's good. Yes, it's good. Amen. It's nothing <laughs> but the glory of God. When I was, when I was flying in um, on Thursday, Friday, I think. When I was flying in, I was sitting in the plane, and I was looking out the window, and I began to see the body of water. Everything was flat, and the body of water was there, and then the land was there. But can I tell you that the water didn't overflow into the land? The water had boundaries that it could go to. That's nothing but the glory yes. of God. Because you have all this water, but God has said you only can go but so far. Because the ocean obeys God. Everything obeys God, and he gets the glory out of that. And when I began to see that, this this right here is the word that God gave me. Amen. He said, listen, he said, everything that's going on in your life, he said, you have to understand that the enemy has boundaries. He cannot go but so far in your life. And he said, just as this water has boundaries and it cannot go up on the land, he said, I've held back the water from coming on the land. He says the same thing. I've held back the enemy from operating in your life but so much. He said he has boundaries and there's not much that he can do. But I'll allow him to go a little bit and to afflict you in certain ways that I might get the glory. You know, it, it brings up the story of Job to me. And I look at the story of Job, and I, and I look at all that Job went through. God told him, he said, you can afflict him, but you can't have it. Mm-hmm. Yes. He said, you only can go but so far. Mm-hmm. Your hand can only be extended but so far. Amen. I won't allow you to kill him, mm-hmm. but I'll allow you to afflict him. Jesus. Because sometimes I need a justifiable reason in order to get you done. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I need a reason to bless you the more. Mm-hmm. And you got to understand that the things that you have been through in your life, God needed a reason to justify to give you more. He needed a reason to bring whatever he needed to bring into your life. So that pressure had to be applied for Job, even though Job lost everything. Some of you might have lost something. You know, I, I feel like I lost almost everything that I was familiar with. Mm, you know, in 16, I felt 16 years is a long time. It was actually like 17. It was a long time and I felt like, man, like, What's going on? I feel like my world was like crashing in. But God began to show me. He said, listen, he said, you had to go through this. Sometimes he's got to remove things out of your life, yes, people yes, out of your yes, life. Yes. Because in order for God to bless you the way that he want to bless you, they can't be present. But you will have to go through those times in the wilderness. I was talking to my roomie yesterday, to Nima. 
I was talking to her yesterday, and we were talking about going through those wilderness states. Mm. And that's really what it is. When you're going through certain situations, it's the wilderness. Mm -hmm. But we act like we're exempt from the wilderness. Mm -hmm. You're not exempt from the wilderness. Don't you understand that when Jesus was, uh, after the dove ascended off of him, where was he driven to? In the wilderness. He didn't just walk into the wilderness. No, but he was driven into the wilderness by the situations that was applied to him, by the pressure that was applied to him. But because he stood in the wilderness, and I tell people all the time, Jesus was not just tempted one day. He was tempted for 40 days and 40 nights. But because he went through that, he went into the wilderness. He stayed there only for a limited amount of time, but he overcame the wilderness. And it's the same thing. Your situation that you have been through, the situations that you're going to face, you're going to overcome them. Or you've already overcome them, but the wilderness is necessary. Do you hear what I'm saying? So listen to this. Without the pain, the hurt, the death, and the challenge, there will not be any growth. So a lot of times when people, you know, we get saved, you know, different things like that, we think that everything's supposed to just be peachy doo. Everything's just supposed to be just great. It's not going to be just great all the time. There comes some things in your life that comes and it helps to shape you, to form you. You know, we talk about the scripture that says, I've been through the fire and I've been through the flood, but God has brought me out into a wealthy place. There are different things that we have to face, but they make you who you are today. You would not be the woman of God you are today if you had not, I'm not going to tell you a story, yeah. but you would not be this woman. You wouldn't be sitting here doing what you're doing now host of this cruise if you had not been through what you've been through. Mm -hmm. And so these things make you who you are. I mean, it's kind of like God peels you back. I feel like I've been peeled back <laughs> in the last five months, literally, mm -hmm. like a banana. <laughs> Just stripped. Yeah. And, but I've learned so much. I've learned how to exhaust every task. I've learned to exhaust the trials. I've learned to exhaust the tribulations and pull out the purpose in the midst of it. Because every day you go through, there is a purpose for that situation. And in order for God to get the glory, you have to be willing to fulfill purpose. You know, there's a lot of times that people say, you know, I'm not fulfilled. There's more. There's got to be more to life. It's because you're not walking in purpose. That's right. That's good. When you begin to walk in purpose, then the fulfillment will come. That's good. Until you walk in purpose, you will always feel like there's more. There's this can't be. Mm. There's got to be mm. more. There's got to be something else. I must be missing. No, it's because purpose, purpose allows you to see the established things of God in your life. And so when you begin to walk in purpose, that fulfillment comes and God can get the glory. Amen. 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 That's good. So let's go to First Peter five. This, this scripture, this passage of scripture is so familiar to most of us. And we quote this scripture so much. You want to use the phone for scripture? I hope I can get it because I ain't know the end. It may pull it off time. I was going to bring my extra Bible. I have a Bible somewhere. How old is it? I was going to give it to this Oh, okay. Right here. The mine's won't. Okay. Maybe it's going to come up. 1 Peter 5 and 10. Bear with me, y'all. I'm trying to get this in. You got one? Okay. Because I had one somewhere over there, but I can't get it right now. You got it. First Peter 5. This is what the scripture says. Now, the thing is the benefit of applying pressure. It says, Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. In due time. Casting all your care upon him, for he care for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walking about, seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith. You know, your faith is so important. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. But the God of all grace, who has called us unto, listen to this, 
We're talking about glory. But the God of all grace who has called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. Listen to this. After that ye have suffered a while, makes you perfect, establish, strengthen, and settles you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. So that scripture right there is telling you that whatever you have to go through in life, whatever you have to deal with in life, Whatever you have to deal with in life, it's going to help make you perfect. It's going to help establish you. It's going to help strengthen you. And it's going to help settle you. Just like how you just hit your knee, your knee problem. You just thought, oh, I'm just going through this. I just got this pain. Not saying that. But if I got this pain and it's just, God said, I want to show y'all the glory. So you went through that so that we could see the glory of God. You went and had your back. You just probably popped up out of nowhere. You had surgery. And so, did, was you in pain the whole time that you've been traveling? Okay, so she had that. But God allowed her to have that at this moment that he could get the glory. Yes. He said, all I want to be able to do is show you, show you who I am. We look at the children of Israel. When they were in bondage. When they were in slavery. He, they didn't have to be in slavery. They didn't have to go through those things. But God said, I'm going to allow that to happen. And I'm going to allow the enemy to think he got you. <clears throat> See, that's what happens a lot of times is when you're going through certain situations, the enemy like, yeah, I got it. But God said, no, not so. Because you have a time limit. Because you can't operate longer than I say that you can operate. I only need to let you operate to a point to where somebody can see when I perform what it is that I need to do in your life. He said, I'm only allowing you to afflict them. See, see, people don't understand that, yeah, he's the devil, but he's still God's devil. He can't just do what he wants to do in your life. And so the, the, the point is, is that allowing God to be God, allowing him to do what he needs to do in your life, that the glory might be shown. And always keep that on your mind. That it's not about you. That's right. It's not about you. It's not about me. But it's about me fulfilling my purpose here right. on earth. Thank you, God. It's not about anything but purpose. Thank you, Jesus. Are you willing to walk in purpose? What you were created for was placed on the inside of you before you was even in your mother's womb. When you was just not even a thought. God said, I knew you then. He said, I've ordained some things for you. I've called you and I've placed purpose on the inside of you. But the only way that the purpose of him can be fulfilled in you is if you allow him to get the glory out of your life. That's the only way. The purpose for Jesus to come was to redeem mankind. That was it. God knew that he was going to have to go through the suffering. He knew that he was going to have to go through different things. But he said that is the purpose. And guess what Jesus did? He came here. He was not selfish. And he fulfilled purpose. So when we are not selfish, and when we're selfless, it allows God to fulfill purpose in our lives. Do you understand what I'm saying? So listen, in, uh, getting here, we heard prophet just say, getting here to this boat was a challenge. Yes. How many of y'all got some adversity? <laughs> Jesus. Let me tell y'all. I thought, wow, but that's like, girl. <laughs> I do not know if I'm going to even be able to come. Yes. I promise you, it was like so much stuff was happening. Yes. And I was like, what is going on? And I was like, something ain't right. <laughs> but Lord, I'm going to let you get the glory. Yes. That if I got to go through this in order to get where you need me to be, in order for you to get the glory, then I'm willing. Yes. I had so much stuff that came up against me. I even had like a, a spirit of dread that tried to come up on oh, me wow. that made me like, oh, man, I really don't want to go now. I just, you know, and I called her and I said, listen, I'm just going to trust God and believe God that he's going to get me here. Yeah. I'm talking about business slowed down. It was just ridiculous. And it was just like, 
I had to get here in order for God to get the glory. Yes. Amen. You had yeah. to get here in order for God to get the glory. That's good. That's because good. if it was up to the enemy, you would not be here. Yes. How about if it was up to your flesh? You would be here. Yep. You want to be honest with we blame everything yeah. <laughs> But everything is the enemy. Sometimes it's just you. Yeah. It's just your flesh. And we understand that the flesh is an enemy against God. Mm -hmm. The flesh is against God. The flesh is not for God. But the thing is, is that when the spirit of God is dwelling on the inside, that's right. And the spirit of God rises up on the inside, yeah, amen. It gives you a strength. It gives you a vigor. That's right. It gives you a steadfast to say, you know what? If it's if it's for the glory of God, then I'm willing. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Then I'm willing. I remember, I used to pray and I used to say, God, you know, I want you to get the glory out of my life. I want you to, you know, uh, to just show your glory in me. And so when I began to go through the situation, I used to pray a prayer a long time and just continually pray this prayer. You probably heard my testimony. And I used to say, Lord, if it's necessary, then I'll go through it. But if it's not necessary, I'll refuse. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I would pray, right? So then when all this stuff started going on in my life last year, and I'm like, Lord, what in the world? Like, why am I going through this? He said, don't you remember? This is, see, God, God said, bring my word up in remembrance of me. He never say, I'm going to bring your word up in your in remembrance of you. So when I began to pray, like, Lord, what's going on? He said, don't you remember the prayer that you prayed? I'm like, what prayers? <laughs> I prayed a lot of prayers. He said, you prayed a prayer. He said, you said, if it's necessary, then I'm willing. But if it's not necessary, then I refuse. Mm. He said, in order for me to take you where I need to take you and to get the glory out of your life, it's necessary. Mm. Once God told me it was necessary, I said, okay, God. Because I spoke that and because I'm truly, you know, devoted to you and I truly want you to get the glory out of my life, I'm willing to go through it. So I ask you a question today. Are you willing to go through what you need to go through in order for God to get the glory? Yes. Even if you don't know what it is, even if he don't show you, man of God, before you're going to go through it. And it might be hard. It might be a test. It might be a trial. It might be tribulation. Are you willing to go through it? Yes. Are you willing to go through it? Yes. Because sometimes we look and we're like, oh, my gosh. Like, this is a big hill. You know, like when you exercise and when you go in and you see that big old hill, and you like, nah, I don't want to run up <laughs> But I know in order to get up that hill, it's gonna help me to be who I to be better. Are you willing to go up that hill? Are you willing to strive for and to continue? So I want to take y'all to a um, to a passage of scripture that will that's where we'll kind of stay at. And uh, it's First Samuel. First Samuel two. Um, oh, sorry, my speaker. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the story the story is of Hannah. 